Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Today's video is on the East African Rift Valley and the Great Lakes. We're going to concentrate on certain Great Lakes. Now, obviously, there's hundreds of lakes in this area, and the Rift Valley stretches for over, you know, 4,000 miles from Jordan, Middle East, down to Mozambique, as you can see here in the far south of this map on the right-hand side. And these lakes are just incredible. They have uh, unique uh, biodiversity, unique chemistry sometimes, in terms of their geographic location, their elevation, uh, alkalinity, and today we're going to look at this in general. So first, I'm going to look at just discuss. Oh, sorry, just discuss the general, the general uh, facts about the area. We're going to look at the soda lakes and what they are in terms of the alkalinity. We will look at the uh, various lakes, the large ones, in more detail. Okay, so Lake Victoria, Lake Tanganyika, Lake uh, Malawi as well, um, and also Lake Albert. We have going to discuss quickly uh, based on solar lakes in terms of Lake Natron, or Natron, which is famous, okay? And also look at Lake Kivu as well. Even though it's a smaller lake, it's a very deep lake, and all that brings about its own set of characteristics and, in some cases, dangerous uh, characteristics. So this is the video. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so in general, let's look at the map. So in general, for geographic locations, we're looking at certain countries that either these lakes create natural borders for, or they are in between uh, and shared between countries. So looking at this map, on the right-hand side, we have the Indian Ocean right here, and uh, down uh, just off the coast of Mozambique, the Mozambique Channel, which also uh, borders or separates Mozambique from Madagascar. And there are some smaller islands and the Comoros Islands uh, off the coast of uh, Eastern Africa. I may have got Tanzania a little bit more stretched than I'd like in terms of the accuracy of this map, so I apologize. But we have um, various major countries, you know, Somalia, Ethiopia, South Sudan, you've got East African Republic, uh, or Central African Republic up here in the top left. We have the DRC, which is a huge country, okay, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Zambia, Mozambique down here, which is where kind of like the East African Rift Valley kind of ends. It does kind of continue slightly with uh, a small fracture down into the east, uh, the, the Indian Ocean rise. Um, yeah, uh, Malawi here, which is obviously, you know, partly the lake. Um, and these smaller countries, Rwanda, up here, the northern one, and then uh, Burundi down here, that's next to Lake uh, Tanganyika and Lake Kivu. And we have Uganda, uh, right smack in the middle. Uganda kind of shares Lake Albert, Lake Victoria, and uh, Lake Niagara. So Lake Victoria is huge, absolutely massive, and that is shared by three countries, Uganda, Kenya, Kenya and Tanzania. So in terms of the east, where does it fit? So how does it fit? So obviously you've got some shared borders based on the lake's natural landforms and uh, geography. You've got some um, uh, single countries having ownership over the lakes as a geopolitics. Uh, you've got a large area. Now I did put in here the, this dashed line, this black dashed line here represents the equator. So we do have in terms of the uh, location, you know, around zero degrees latitude, we have obviously these lakes all within tropics. So we can decipher from that is obviously, um, you know, arid conditions. Normally around the equator, you'd have rainforest or some sort of uh, tropical rainforest environment, but in this case, because of elevation, and uh and tectonics as we know obviously and magma then obviously this limited forest is pretty much too high in elevation so you get this these arid and dry conditions with high elevation so a lot of these lakes 
I see pretty much all these links are called closed. Another term for closed lakes is endoheric. Another term for closed lake is endoheric. So basically, all these lakes are um, unique. Now, there's obviously a lot of closed lakes around the world. There's some in the US, there's some in Russia. Um, and they have unique geography and, and unique landforms, uh, usually created by some sort of uplift uh, where that's how they become closed, basically. Most lakes are open, which means that there is a flow in, there is a flow out, but endoheric means that there is a, as a flow in, either from a river or a tributary, or obviously from rainfall directly into the lake, but there is no outflow. There is no rivers that leave um, this, this lake. Yeah, the lake is the final destination, like the ocean is for most river systems around the world. So let's look at a term that is water, all right? So soda lake. Now the East African Rift Valley has a great bunch of these, these uh, soda lakes. Now they're called soda lakes based on their carbonate characteristics. In terms of their bicarbonate, in terms of their, their water chemistry. In regards to the comparison, these lakes in the East African Rift Valley um, have high pH, which means that if they're over seven, they are classified as alkaline in terms of, in terms of acid base, right? So it is the level of alkalinity is the amount of like, uh, it's, neutral, it's to neutralize, neutralize the, the acidity or the OH. So if you have, well, basically water, uh, water, river water is generally around 7.4 pH. So slightly alkaline. However, the average river itself has a range of pH between, you know, 6.5 up to 8.5, depending on how deep it is. Uh, if it's stratified, which means it's in different layers based on temperature and density, and the wind, um, you know, some, some lakes can be continuously uh, mixed between the deep layers and the top layers because the top layers have oxygen, which is oxic, and the bottom layers usually have less oxygen or could be anoxic with a, a complete lack of oxygen in the bottom layers of the lake. Also depends on the depth. Some lakes are only a few feet deep, like Lake Victoria, only a few meters deep, whereas Lake uh, Tanganyika is extremely extremely deep the second deepest lake in the world and we'll get to that uh later on but these soda sort of lakes are characterized by high alkalinity now they can go between eight uh up to 11 in some extreme cases like uh, up to ph uh 12 uh which i'll see is here in lake uh natron or natron which is that that special case study of a very small, extremely alkaline lake that has adverse effects on the uh, biodiversity in that lake. Now, how do lakes get to this point? So let's take the case of the Great Lakes in East African Rift Valley. So you have high elevation. So due to um, the, the diversion plate boundary and the rift-in process of creating normal faults and creating gravens and half gravens that you get this uh, these elevated sides okay and you have this this basin that is kind of created because of the rifting and the movement way and you get these rifts and these gravens in terms of this one would be a full graven or half graven you get the accumulation of water at the bottom through the impervious layer of rock or bedrock, and you get the, you know, the production of a lake or creation of a lake. So what happens is you have an inflow. It could be a river system, you know, one or two or multiple rivers feeding the lake water, um, or it could just be groundwater. Or it could be just precip, precipitation. 
or it could be a combination of all three. You have a flow of water now. This because it's arid, high elevation with limited or seasonal rainfall, with seasonal wind directions, you might have limited inflow. So the lake could be um, not very large or could be not very deep. Generally, with the these rift valleys, you do get very, very, very deep lakes, which is a you know, it's kind of a bad diagram for that, but very deep lakes. If I just if I actually uh, show you what I mean. So the lake would actually do this, like that. And the lake would fill up all of this. So some of these lakes, like Lake Kivu, Lake Tanganyika over here. So Kivu, Tanganyika, and Lake Malawi um, are extremely, very, very deep lakes. And this also causes them to become um, you know, quite dangerous. I'll get back in a second. So if I fill in this lake, there we go, very deep lake in the Rift Valley. Now, the basin could be wider than the actual river, but the rivers are usually very long and very narrow. So you get the water flowing in from the groundwater. So you get the chemical weathering of bedrock and ground and, and the rock basically around it. So um, a lot of these have sediments at the bottom, which are called lacrostin sediments, which is basically an old, ancient layers of sediments that have accumulated over time, and you get the inflow from various sources. Now, the residence time in these lakes can be a long time, how long the water stays there, but also because it's arid, don't forget, we're by, by the equator, so there's much consistent uh, rainfall, uh, but consistent temperature and climate. You're going to have the main outflow to be evaporation. That's the main principal way that these lakes would lose water through evaporation um, and back into the atmosphere. Now, what happens is when it evaporates, obviously the, the water molecules are evaporated and taken into, into the gas phase, and it leaves behind or precipitates out all of the different uh, minerals and the salts, which is all the dissolved ions that are inside the water that have come from the river system or the bedrock and these salts have been left behind and gradually over time through this process of inflow of water and picking up minerals and dissolved ions and salts and the evaporation taking away that the water molecules you can get this increased alkalinity so over time you know and these lakes have been around for, you know, the youngest is probably 200,000 years. So they've been around for a long time. You get this increased uh, alkalinity or higher in of pH. So in terms of water chemistry, these saline lakes or high alkalinity. So you've got basically over pH 9 to be classified as a alkaline lake. So the average lake or water is around 7 to 8. Point five, but you get over nine, then you get this higher alkalinity. Then you get these dissolved ions that accumulate in the water through evaporation and that high, um, arid, uh, very hot temperatures. So these are all kind of um, various um, elements that are left behind. So you've got sodium, you've got uh, carbonate, and that forms bicarbonate, which is here. Bicarbonate, and a mixture of different uh, cations or cations and anions or anions. You know, the main ones being uh, sodium, calcium, potassium, magnesium, and then the only anion really that's common is the uh, chlorine, okay, chloride. So the high evaporation rates cause these, uh, these waters to become uh, al alkaline, and that is called desiccation. So you're basically removing the water and leaving behind all of the salts. Salts remain. So we're going to add in also the hydrology aspect and the chemistry. We also have to link up geology and the actual rifting, which is the main reason why these lakes are, are formed. Now, uh, as 
mentioned in previous videos, uh, both the Western branch, which is kind of like here, starts at Lake Albert, the Albertine Rift, comes down here, okay, and kind of like uh, flows into Lake Molari and then comes down and like ends here, but there's a little continuation onto the east, east um, well, Indian rise. But then you've got the, the kind of Western branch, right? And then close around here, with the lakes kind of being more central, uh, centrally part of the Gravens and all these normal faults and stretching and tensional forces are flying here and got uh, you know the half basically the half Gravens so it's going this direction. Now the Tanzanian uh, or Tanzanian Craton is right here, which is kind of like that older area of rock and that shield which kind of like dictates where the rift goes and the rift is kind of breaking along. Uh, the weaker areas that were formed when it was an ancient orogeny area, the Mozambique Belt. Then you get also the eastern branch. The eastern branch comes down here, involves Lake Tukana. Okay, comes down through here, Lake Natron. You also include the volcanic massifs of Mount Kenya and Mount Kilimanjaro, which are also part of the eastern branch. And the eastern branch goes up to the main Ethiopian Rift Valley um, and into the Afar Triangle and Depression. So these two branches are basically the the birthplace of these lakes, and they are around obviously the East African Dome, which is also right here. So all of these lakes we know have high elevation. Now the geology, because it's most or mostly eastern branch is mostly volcanic. There's a lot more uh, volcanism and basaltic outflow. Uh, in the eastern branch uh, versus the um, western branch. Western branch is classic half graven, rifting with limited volcanism. And what we do have is some hydrothermal vents. Now these will add CO2 and some sulfur. Um, and maybe some uh, SO2 as well into the water directly from the bedrock. And that would also help to work with the, uh, the carbonation of the lakes as well. All right, so that's the, the overview of both the chemistry, hydrology, formation of these great lakes. They are amazing each, each uh, part of geology. They're amazing in the formation, their existence. Uh, biodiversity, the size, the depth, um, and the next video we're going to look at each lake kind of in more detail, or the main lakes in more detail, and then give a little um, overview of both Lake Kivu and Lake Natron. All right, thanks so much, guys.